Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel and um, in this tutorial I'll be showing you how you can design this Angels and Divas Club Flyer in Pro from scratch to finish. And um, before I go ahead, if you have supported my channel um, by liking, by commenting and by following me, I want to say a big thank you to all of you. And uh, if you're new to this channel, you're watching this tutorial series for the first time, I want to say thank you. Just kindly subscribe to my channel and don't forget to turn on the post notification so you won't miss any videos I'll be dropping after this time. So without further ado, uh, let's not waste too much time, let's get started. So first things first, I'll go over to my Corel Draw. I have mine open up here already so you can do that and uh, follow me. Um, lest I forget, um, the resource file uh, that I used, uh, that's the images and the text I used for this tutorial is in the description of this video. So do well to download them and uh, you can tag along with me in this tutorial. So let's get started. So first thing I'll do is, um, and I forgot to mention, I'm using the CorelDRAW 2018 for this tutorial. If you have a higher version, you can do well to use that and um, just work along with me. So first things first, I will click on file and click on new. So when this pops up, I'll just uh, quickly give mine a name. Um, so I'll just give us club flyer. That's what I'll give you for this tutorial. So I will set my width to five and my height to five. It should be in inches, please. Primary color mode, I will set it to RGB because it's just going to be online. I'm not printing this out. So I'll set it to RGB and the resolution stays at 300. Uh, this I'll leave at enhanced and uh, all of this I'll set to default. And uh, having done all of this, I'll just click OK and wait for Coral Draw to do its magic. As you can see, guys, um, I'm greeted with this page, a 5x5, just like I made the settings um, earlier on. So the next thing I'll do is I'll double click on this rectangle to make a replica of this page I'll be working on. So what I'll just do is I'll just give it a color white, come over here, give it white, and uh, remove the outline by right clicking on this X shape. So first things first, uh, I will start by typing. So I'll just click on my text tool and start typing. So what I want to type is um, I'm typing angels and divas. So I'll just zoom close to this so you see how it's done properly. So the font I use for this is Kenyan coffee. So I'll just go ahead and search Kenyan coffee RG. So this is the font I used. So having changed the font, I'll go over to my shape tool and I would um, drag this up like this. Huh? So we don't have too much space in between. So having done that, I'll go back to my pick tool and I'll go to objects and I'll go to break artistic text apart so I can edit them separately. So having done that, we have our angels separate and the divas and so we still have the and and divas together so what i want to do is i want to break this also apart so i'll go to objects and break k and text apart the shortcut for that is ctrl k so i haven't done that i want to reduce the spaces the spaces in between the angels and the divas like these tiny spaces so what I'll do is I'll go back to the shape tool and uh, bring this in like this, somewhat like this, um, it's too much, so I'll bring it out a little bit like this. So I haven't done that, I'll zoom out and I would like to do the same to this, and not too much, and having done that, I'll click out and go back to the pick tool and resize this like this so it doesn't um, exceed the position of this S we have in the angels here I'll also do the same to this and and reduce it somewhat like this 
Huh? So having done that, the next thing I would want to do is I would want to make adjustment to this. So I would go over to my rectangle tool. I'll draw a rectangle around this this way and what I want to do with this rectangle is I'll go to the shape tool and click on it and hold down the control key on your keyboard and drag in like this so we have rounded corners and I'll drag in down like this so I have another rounded corner here I'll make this one perfect by adding extra more just like this when I've achieved this what I'll do is I would um, make sure this is behind this um, I'll select this and uh, right click I'll select the and and right click and click on order and front of page now the reason why I did that is when I want to make my adjustment so I'll be able to select this one without this interfering with my selection so I would give this um, this color here which is this sky blue or better still I'll give it um, let me just work with this sky blue right um, later on I can make changes to it so I'll click on it and I'll remove the outline like this and make this an a little bit smaller like this um, that's too small I'll drag up like this mm. and by the way you can also come up here and um, make changes to it so I'll just give it 18 and cool with this right or I'll leave it at 19 let's just work with 19 so having done this I'm okay with this with the way it is like this and I would like to move this closer, this device, and um, space it out a little bit. When you are designing, guys, your typography matters a lot. That's why I tend to pay attention to working with my text first. Um, okay, so having done this, I would zoom out F4 and um, select all of this text like this and make it somewhat bigger like this. So having done that, I can continue with my adjustment. So I will select this rectangle, which is the background, uh, the first rectangle created, and I would give it uh, this blue color, like this. So this is what we're working with. So I'll just click on the angels and hold down the shift key and click on this, the device and change the color to white, right? And also I'll change this to white also and i want to make this a little bit bigger like this okay haven't done this i'm okay so the next thing i want to do is i'll bring in my other text guys like i mentioned i'm working with the text because i want to get the feel of what i want you can um different graphic uh, designers can um, start with images i've got a lot of questions people ask me why do i like starting my text it's because once i get my typography right and Every other thing just follow in place. So that's why I like to focus on my typography first when I'm designing. So the next thing I would like to do is I would like to type um, the main things. So I'll just go on and uh, type present. And um, the font I'll be using for this is Galano Grotesque. So you just type Galano Grotesque. Um, you can find it in the download files I provided for this tutorial. So I'll just type that and I'll make it smaller like this or i can just come up here and reduce the size so i'll just give it um let's say seven um somewhat like that and go to the shape to and just increase it like this when i'm done i'll click out uh, for the sake of um, clarity and visibility i would want to set this to i'll make it bold don't worry guys, this is what I added to the download files, Galano Grotesque Bold. So I'll just, uh, with my arrow keys on my keyboard, I'll just bring it out so it's directly beneath, directly above the angels. 
and then to save. So the next thing I'll do is I'll just um, fill in my other text. So I'll just type just the um, the same thing I used. I'll use this Galano bold and change the color to white. So I'll move this here and um, then of course make sure it's in the same position just as this one and the next thing i want to do is i'll go over to my rectangle tool and draw a bit of rectangle here and somewhat like this not too much let me zoom in so you see what i'm doing well so i can just make this um red and i'll remove the outline and I would make a duplicate copy of this, Ctrl C, Ctrl V, so I can use this without having to go over to my text tool and having to type again. So I'll just uh, make this instead of 25, um, with hierarchy in mind, um, I will just reduce this and put 18 here. Good, I think 18 is still too much. Let's work with 13. Okay, good. So what I'll do is I'll just um, control A to select all of this and I'll just type in spins, spins and I'll type in the name of the DJs for this event, DJ Bonky and um, DJ Newbie. Okay, so I'll make this a little bit smaller. Um, but just like I said, you can do this uh, manually or you can do this by setting it here so I'll just give it a 9.5 good so somewhere around this it's okay so I want to make this rectangle a little smaller in terms of height um, somewhere around here it's nice too so I would make sure this is centralized how you can do that is um, selecting the text and hold down shift select the rectangle and just press C and E on your keyboard so it centralizes it to this rectangle. So I would zoom out to see what I'm doing in real time. What I'll just do is I'll select um, this rectangle that has the spins and the name of the DJs, and I'll just hold down my shift key and move it up a little bit. Good. So having done that, I'll just move over and type the remaining things. I will change to right, as you can see, guys. Uh, but then I would like to make this a little bit smaller, and I would reduce the space in between. I'll go to the shape to and bring this up a bit like this. Good. So I haven't done that. I'll just go back to my pick two and I will move this in place like this. Um, to make sure it's aligned with all this because I want it aligned with um, this Thursday I have here I'll just select this, hold down the shift key and select the Thursday and press R for right so it aligns to the right side R for right if I want it aligned to the left side that's on this part of it on this Thursday here what I'll do is I'll select it and uh, click on Thursday and select left as you can see guys it has gone to the left but i want it at the right side so i'll just click arrow so it goes to the right side yeah easy right so um haven't done that um let's just go ahead as you can see guys what i've just done is i've just given myself the real feel of how i want um, things to go in this design by 
doing this typing first and arranging it well um just like i mentioned before so what i'll just do with this text i will just uh, make it a little bit bigger and um, move it slightly to the edge not too close to the edge you don't want things happening around these borders just for safety sakes so i'll just move it a little bit holding my shift key and my right um, arrow key or my keyboard so i haven't done that so we've done everything that has to do with typography let's now work on the images so the first thing i'd like to do first is um, bring in my first image i use for this um so this is not what i want to do so angels and divas so the first image i will be using for this tutorial is this valot image so i will just drag and um drop inside like this easy peasy so but if you like to take the long way around things and um you want to spend more time in your design you can go over to file and you click on import and you can locate um where it is on your pc and probably you, you can join us when this tutorial is over but then to make things easy just um, go over to your file explorer and locate where you have your file like i have mine already opened up and just drag and drop like that so what i'll be doing with this image is i would flip it around like this um, like this but then i wouldn't do that just because i want to carry you guys along what i'll do is i'll come up here and i'll flip it like this just the way it is now and i would click on this one mirror vertically to mirror it again so um, this is how i want to use this image so what i want to do is i want to make sure it blends right to this um, background i have already so what i would do is um, click on this transparency tool and um, hold down the shift key and drag down like this so i've created that blend oh guys i'll do that once again um go to your transparency tool and just hold down the shift key while the image that's this background we just brought in is selected you can zoom close to what you're doing clearly just um hold down the shift key and drag like this now let me uh, quickly explain the concept of this uh this white point and this black point now when you are working with images if you want to have it in mind that white actually stands for the visible areas of your image and this black aspect stands for the concealed image the, the concealed parts of your images so if you want to conceal anything you know that you're working with this black slider like if you observe um, closely if i move this black upward a little bit like this if you notice i'm concealing more areas of this image i hope you understand so if i bring this down this white now for example i bring it down a bit you can see what i'm doing is i'm revealing more areas of this image so have it at the back of your mind that white reveals black conceals so it works um if, uh, if you're using your adobe illustrator if you're using your photoshop and any other software that can actually design or you can actually design it that's how it works so having done that i'll just go over and um, i'll put this in place so i'll just um shift this a little bit um to see what i'm doing clearly and what i want to do is i want to convert this to a bitmap so i'll go to bitmap convert to bitmap my reason i'm converting to bitmap is because i want to make further adjustments to this um particular image i just brought in because if you don't convert to bitmap you won't be able to make more adjustment to it so i'll go over to bitmap and uh, convert to bitmap when this pops out i'll leave the resolution at 300 and uh, i'll leave everything check marks and um these two check marks and click okay right 
So having done that, I will move this out of uh, the way so I'll see what I'm doing clearly. So what I want to do is I want to power clip this. Um, let me zoom closer. I want to power clip this image inside of this of this shape. So what I'll just do is I'll select the image, right click, and click on power clip. It should be somewhere here. Okay, this is it. Power clip inside. If you are using uh, the latest version, if you are using the 2019, 2020, you can you find it somewhere around this area. So uh, mine is just up here. So I'll just come power clip inside. It brings out this uh, friendly arrow. This black arrow is always black. And I'll just click on this shape. So it places it inside of it. So um, while it's inside like this, I might want to make a few adjustments. I want to flip this back so this area will be here. So what I'll just do is I'll just click on this like this. So it brings it somewhere here, as you can see, guys. Hmm? So we have done. Uh, you see, finish editing objects um, like this arrow that's shown here. Or what you can do is hold down your control key if you don't find this finish editing object. Um, hold down your control key and double click outside or any area around your document area and just double click like this. If you are using an older version, it would actually work. Or if you're using a 2018 version, it will work like this. So having done that, having them double click, I will just click um, F4 to see what I'm doing clearly. So having done that, um, the next thing we'll be introducing to this uh, design is our uh, model itself. So what we want to do is I'll just go and bring that in inside. So what I'll do is, uh, okay, there she is. I'll just drag and drop inside like this. Understand? So I would zoom out to see what I'm doing right now. Okay, so guys, another thing I want to point out here is that um, when you bring in your images inside of CorelDRAW, to avoid um, this mistake, because most persons actually do it and they leave their images like this. As you can notice now, if you click on it like this, you have on the selection now, you have these areas that are empty. Let me zoom closer, you see they are empty. The image just covers this region like this. But if you click on it, you have these areas. Now, for you to deal with all this, and because if you continue with it like this, the way it is, you might have challenges when you want to select other elements in your designs. So to get rid of this um, trap that you might want to fall into later on, so just go over to your shape tool, where you have your shape tool, and um, as you can see, guys, you have this empty area. So just select these two points like this, and hold down your shift and just drag in like this okay um you can select and even use your arrow keys hold down shift to use your arrow keys on your keyboard um to bring this in like this as you can see guys um so now i now know if i put my image inside like this this is the only thing i'm going to be seeing i'm going to see some extra spaces that would cause conflicts with my elements um, as I proceed in the design. So what I want to do is um, I would want to make this a little bit smaller. So I'll just reduce the size like this, like this. And F4 or function F4 as the case may be for you. And I'll just put her in place like this, right? But before I put her inside, uh, I, I want to quickly do something. I want to create a light effect inside of this design. So I'll just put her aside like this and um, go over to my ellipse tool and um, hold down the control key, of course, to make a perfect circle. And what I want to do is I want to use the color I used here for this and, let me zoom close. For this and, I want to use the same color on this ellipse. So I'll use to create a lighting effect. So I'll come over to where I have a uh, color eyedropper to select it and um, click on this sky blue color or better still to make things easy for us you can just come over here to where you have the sky blue because CorelDRAW actually records the colors you've used um, recently in your current design. So instead of you can do two ways you either use the eyedropper tool to select and, uh, and give it this color or 
just come over here and select this sky blue color you can see guys so this is how easy and how um, flexible working with colors is inside of coral draw so what i want to do is uh i'll remove the outline like this move the outline and um, just like we've done in the past videos uh creating light effects come over to where you have your transparency and what i want to do is i'll click on the uniform transparency and uh, no click on transparency and i'll click on this second one fountain transparency when it pops up i'll just go over to the right side of life and click on this one that says eligible fountain transparency guys good as you can see guys i now have a light effect using just the shape and the good thing about this using shape is that you can actually come over here and actually change the light because you've not converted the big mouth because it's still a shape and change the color of the lights so i can use a yellow uh, i can use a green i can even use a red as you can see guys but another thing you must do is go back to the transparency tool with it selected and make sure it is set the blend mode is set to screen guys make sure it is set to screen as you can see um, i've set mine to screen and i'll just go back to the default color which is this sky blue i used before and select it as you can see guys i have a light effect inside of it but what i want to do is i want to make sure that this light effect is inside of this uh i want to power clip it inside like i did with this background so i'll do what i'll do is i'll press ctrl x and um, i cut it ctrl x is for cut ctrl c is for copy so i'll double click on this like this so when i'm inside of this uh power clip space i'll just control v to paste it so what i can do here is i'll make this bigger a little bit and i would control c again and control v so i make a duplicate copy of it but this time i'll make the copy smaller okay guys you can also come up here and reduce the size so if i use select a, a 1.5 uh, by 1.5 as you can see guys i just made it a little bit smaller like that so i haven't done this i'm okay with it so i'll just uh click out or click finish editing to bring it back to the screen so now i can um now place a model inside so what i'll just do the same way i did with the light effect ctrl x and double click on the rectangle and uh, ctrl v to paste that inside like this as you can see guys okay so she is now inside of the shape so i can now position her well so as this now um let me move out of the way so i want to uh make it more realistic this whole thing we have going on inside so i'll move out to the side and select this lights ctrl c ctrl v to copy and paste so i'll just bring this here and i'll put her in the place of the lights because i want um, to create that um, illusion of the lights shining from behind of her so to make it more uh complete uh to make it more realistic what i'll just do with this one i created i'll just put it somewhere in front of her like this not too much just a little bit so i'll create the complete effect of this light so i can then um change the shaping position of the light like this um you can see i turned it to an oval shape just like you can see now um, and just position it well i'll click on the shape and to bring out this um adjustment so i can rotate it a, a little bit so i have it like this just so the light is um shining um on her and for us to have a more realistic look so having done that i would click on hold down the control key and double click outside of this space as you can see guys we've created a realistic um look to this but another thing i must point out is um i want to make adjustments to this this um image we brought in the other time so what i want to do is um of course bitmap convert to bitmap and um 300 300 yes 
So what I want to do is um, I want to tone down the transparency of this background. So what I'll do is I'll click on transparency tool and I'll select the first one, uniform transparency, and that reduces the transparency of this image because I don't want it to be too much. I don't want the attention to be on the background instead of the details I have in my design. Have that at the back of your mind. Uh, so having done that, I'll click on um, pick to and hold down the control key and double click to come out of this power clip um, object I have inside. So having done that, the next thing I'll be doing is um, we're almost done with this design. Um, just a few things to go and I'll double click on this. I'll just move this a little bit to this side. So I have um, space for my design to breathe a little bit. Haven't done that, I'll click out. Okay, I think I like it like this. So what I want to do next is uh, bring in my other background. Let me move this light a little bit so I don't have it too much on her face. So I'll click out. Okay, I think I'm okay with this. So what I want to do now is um, I want to add in um, the next image, which is this image. Um, so I'll just drag and I'll drop inside like this. Right. Um, so what I want to do is I need only the light aspect. I don't need the car because it's not the car design and all of that. So what I'll do is I'll select the image. I'll go over to my shape tool and I would uh, draw a marquee selection around these two nodes. And what I will do is hold down the shift key and actually bring in like this. So I'll drag up like this to this point where I have this part. And uh, okay, I haven't gotten to my to where I like. I'll just select it like this. And um, next thing I'll do is I'll convert this to bitmap. Convert to bitmap. So I'll convert this to bitmap like this and I'll press OK. So then again, we have that same problem of this um, empty space, which we don't have anything inside. So what I'll just do is I'll just select this part and I will bring in like this till it gets to this point. Okay. So uh, F4 again, uh, what I'll do is I will like to position this well. So what I'll do is to just create an extra lighting effect. I will blend, I will then blend this image now. So I'll go over to my transparency tool and select the transparency and hold down the shift key while selecting the image, that's this image and uh, just drag from this point and drop here. Yeah, as you can see, I've created a blend like this. I'll go over to bitmap, um, convert to bitmap again and okay. So what I want to do is I want to blend this part so I have it blended to this side of it. So I'll go over to my transparency again, repeat the same step we did earlier on like this. Okay guys, so with this out of the way, we now have this nice looking effect. So the next thing obviously to do is to put it inside of that, um, of this tango that houses all other power clip elements. So I'll just use Ctrl X and double click on this part like this and place it inside like this. I'll just move it in place so it blends well. Okay. So having done that, I would uh, I want to rotate it like this a bit. Okay. So having done this, uh, I'll make sure I put this well, place it well, and double click when I'm done like this. Okay guys, so I will zoom out to see what I'm doing in real time. And uh, now, uh, the last thing I'll be introducing, the last image, not the last thing to do, the last image I'll be introducing to this design is the last image, which is this other image of this cool looking diva. So I'll just bring that inside like this and drag and drop. Uh, I want to make her smaller. Somewhat like this. Um, she's going to be around this position. So what we want to do is, of course, like we did with the previous images, we want to blend this too. So go over to my transparency tool and um, hold down the shift key and uh, blend like this first. Now we're going to be blending this image on all sides. So blend like this. 
having done that go over to converting it to bitmap and of course blend this side of it so i'll go over to where i have it like this and i'll blend like this cool right i just want this part of that so i'll just move it closer so i have that mirrored part um taken away so i have this part like this good so having done that i'll go over to as usual convert to bitmap and um click ok so having done this i would want to blend this side to go over to my transparency too and uh, i'll click on it like this now the reason why i'm doing it directly above my design is because i want to see it in real time what i'm doing you can i also have it outside here and do it outside too if you wish to so i'll just drag it outside like this and place it inside uh, i am blending that part and i'll go back to bitmap convert to bitmap so okay and i want to blend these two parts like i said we're blending the four sides of the image so I'll click on transparency to and uh, I'll just hold down the shift key and drag black conceals so you see now I have concealed all this part of it so I haven't done that I will be converting into bitmap for the last time convert to bitmap and okay so I haven't done this if we put this like this uh, it will be too much depending on how you want to use this but what I would like to do last last is um, I would come to my transparency tool and click on transparency. And this time I won't be blending. I'll just click on uniform transparency and just click on it. As you can see now, I've toned this um, down a little bit like this. So having it this way, I think I'm okay with it. So what I want to do again with this is I want to power clip it inside of what I have already. I don't want it covering uh, what I have the front like this so i'll control x to cut it and double click on this shape to open it up and paste it inside so what i want to do is i want to drag it a little bit to this area where i have her right and i'll move her a little bit up up a bit and having done this i will just click out like this Good. Okay, so I'll zoom out F4 or function F4 according to how it is on your keyboard. So what I want to do next is um, with this rectangle here, I want to add a gradient feel to it. So what I'll just do is um, first and foremost, I'll make it orange, give it an orange color. Good. And I'll just want to add a gradient feel. Like a gradient feel, I mean having two colors inside of this rectangle a gradient feel having to when you have two or more colors on a particular element of your design you apply the gradient to it so what i'll just do is uh, i'll simply go over to my um interactive field tool i call it gradient forgive me interactive field tool in photoshop or illustrator you you, you call it gradient but yeah it's called the interactive field tool so what i'll just do is i'll just drag from this point and drop like this another way you can assess the interactive field tool in Corel Draw is by simply clicking on g so when you click on g on your keyboard just g it brings it up as you can see now um you see this paint buckets so what i'll just do is hold down the shift key and drag now the main reason why i'm holding down my shift key is because i want to create a gradient on a straight line so if i don't want it on a straight line i can just okay with my gradient selected i'll just drag in and drop in by default um it goes from your natural color which is the orange i use to white so i can then click on this white point and click on this arrow and now specify the color i want as you can see now it has brought up the color wheel uh in this pop-up but what i want to do i'll just come over here to where i have my colors and just click on it as you can see now very easy so I can now uh, move this in position and now what this slider in the middle means is if you want more of the orange, you can drag it to this side, you can see more of the orange. But if you want more of this pink we've selected, you can just drag it to this side like this. It's as easy as that. So because I want more of this orange, so I'll just drag a little bit like this. 
and um, when I have it at this point, I think I'm okay with it like this. So I'll just F4 to zoom out. Now, um, one last thing to do, I want to create a realistic effect like this part of it. I need it a little bit darker. So what I have to do is um, I would select all my details first, first things first and move them up a little bit. So holding down your shift key and clicking your arrow keys on your keyboard actually takes this up like this. Good. And I forgot to bring in my logo so you can have the club logo that you're working on, your client's logo and just bring it in. But for me and for the sake of this tutorial, I'll use my logo and I'll just put it up like this. So I'll say that Pharrell Studio presents and of course you know what follows under it. So um, like I said before, I want to make this a little bit darker so I'll have like um, a dark shade going on here, something dark around here. So to actualize this, what I'll do is I'll select the rectangle tool and I'll just drag and drop like this. Um, make sure it's not going out of the page. Make sure it's under like this. Now to make sure of this, select the rectangle and select this um, squared, like this um, drawing page you're working on and press B, that's the bottom. Um, why I said you should do that is in most cases, most people actually uh, do this mistake of dragging and they drop like this. And instead of it being at the base like this, or some persons even do and it's outside like this. So if you want to bring it in, what you can just do is just selecting the rectangle itself. You just select the working area, which is your canvas as the case may be, or how you want to, or your drawing page itself, and just press B. So it takes B in this context that um, stands for. So B in this context stands for bottom. So you can just put it at the bottom like this, and just the way it is, it's now at the bottom like this. So what I want to do is I want since I need a darker shade to be around this area. So I will just quickly now this is where our color eyedropper now works. So I'll select the dark areas of this image like as you can see now this is lighter this is darker so i'll select this dark area and just give it to this rectangle here as you can see guys and first thing i want to do is i'll make sure i move the outline come here right click move the outline as you can see this is dark now but it doesn't stop here now what we want to do is now we want to blend this rectangle so what we'll do is go over to your transparency tool and uh, click on shift and just move up like this now don't let don't make it go up like this because if you put it up like this you won't really get the effect this is what you have so to make sure that doesn't happen just make sure you are blending you can blend from the middle you can blend from this point and make sure it doesn't get over the because you can see guys i've created that blend mode so having done that i'll go back to my pick tool and just drag this up like this as you can see guys um, now this is darker as you can see and let me click on f4 so you see in full, you can see now i'm now using the rectangle i drew earlier on to make um to make a blend so what i can now do is i don't want this in front like this i want it behind or whichever way you want it to be or as it stands i, I even like the way it is in the front so what i want to do is so it doesn't get in the way of my text. I will want to bring my text to the front. So what I'll just do, I'll just select like this. I'll draw a marquee tool with my selection tool and make sure I've selected all my text and just click on shift page up to bring everything to the top like this, right? As you can see guys, um, that is how I create the effects. So um, now like I, I, I noticed I have the transparent part of this image on my model. I don't want it to be like that. So what I'll just I'll just go back inside like this and um, select this one and to be sure you can move it around to be sure that's what you're selecting. And I'll control page down, control page down again, control page down to make sure this image is now behind her. As you can see guys, 
So, um, okay, just to verify. Okay, I haven't done that. I'll just hold down the control key and click out like this. So I haven't done this. I can uh, decide to go a little bit extra on it and um, create some extra lighting effects to this design. So what I can just do is um, click on the ellipse tool and uh, I want to create a lighting effect on this. So what I'll do is I'll just select the sky blue color, give it to this and um, remove the outline. Of course, go back to the transparency to select the fountain transparency and select this one. That's uh, the, this one, elliptical fountain transparency and uh, click on it and move this in place. So I would bring this here like this and I'll go back and make sure it is set to screen. So screen and create that light effect here. I can go on to several areas of this design and just duplicating this, I'll put this out of the way and just select the orange here and give it to this color. What I can do now to bring out the effect is I'll double click on this orange here to bring out this um, edit fill dialog box so I can then move it to a lighter area as you can see now I can, as I move into the lighter area of this I have a nice effect so when I'm done with that I'll just click OK what I can do with this is make this bigger like this and have it positioned here make sure it is always set to screen guys okay so i haven't done that i'll just move this in place so i have a nice light effect on these things so i haven't done all of this you can go on and go on and on to add your light effects anyway or anywhere around this design but make sure you don't overdo things just um Modation is key when you are designing. Just be moderate and your designs will come out popping well. Okay, right, guys, this brings me to the end of this tutorial. And um, to show that you appreciate this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please and please and please. It helps um, YouTube actually show to more persons that will be interested in tutorials like this. And if you've not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe to this channel because I will be uploading more videos like this um, shortly. And um, if you have any questions about the designs and um, what you've seen in this video, please drop your comments in the comment section and I'll do well to answer all of it. So um, this brings me to the end of the tutorial. I'll see you next video.